I mean, it was a good bomb. You know, sometimes you get the bad bombs. You know, it's like, ah, you know. But this was a good bomb, and, and somebody came up to me, and, and uh, with tears in their eyes, uh, just uh, expressed their uh, gratitude uh, to me and to everyone else as well, but uh, some, said some specific words to me. Um, and uh, at first, I'm just going, like, yeah, okay, thanks, you know, okay, you know. But then the more I just, during worship, the more I you know, think about stuff, uh, the deeper it kind of penetrates uh, through some of the hardness that we learn to build up right. around us. Right. So we, you know, yeah, okay, I hear what you're saying, but I'm not going to swallow the pill because if I swallow it, it'll make me feel something. I don't want to feel nothing because I'm part of the inner shame I'm saying. So uh, it really was a blessing to me. Uh, this morning. I'm not pretty emotional today. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> pretty emotional. I don't know why. But if you all have been here any time at all, you know I'm a crier, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you're visiting, this is, you know, this is somewhat normal. <laughs> uh, but some, sometimes, some days are just different than others. Amen. 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 Uh, so, so. Um, but it really blessed me, and, and so you know who you were um, that did that for me, not necessarily for me, but just to encourage me, and really did encourage me. I know sometimes I'm talking, okay, yeah, thanks, and God bless, and but it really encouraged me, and uh, so thank you for that. Um, where are we at? James Fox. James James I knew where we was. <laughs> I'm just checking to see if you guys were even paying attention. Okay, so James chapter 5. And we're going to uh, start uh, at verse 7. Um, I want to say a few things here about James, uh, you know, through, through, this, through this entire study. You know, if you really just kind of look at the, the book of James, it, it really is, if you'll just, sometimes we just kind of read, you know, to be reading, we're reading, and it's okay to read. It's good that we read, read, read the Bible, but sometimes we're just kind of reading, and it's like we're putting in our time, and we're reading. Um, but one of the things uh, that's interesting, if you just kind of slow down and just kind of really kind of soak this in and really kind of, you know, meditate and, and kind of consider what James is saying here, it's really pretty, it's, it's pretty crazy. I mean, he's, he's talking to, first of all, the church that is scattered abroad. Uh, so they're under a lot of persecution, a lot of stuff going on. And so, but he, he's dealing with, he's talking to them about just everyday stuff that we deal with in our hearts, in our minds, uh, with our emotions, things that get us off kilter and things that get us going this way and, and attitudes and, and all kinds of stuff. I mean, he's, he's really kind of just blanketing uh, kind of uh, a lot of the areas of life that you and I deal with uh, in our lives from you know day to day, from year to year, and so on and so forth. And so, but I mean, he's dealing with a lot of things here. Um, and so throughout, and the thing that should, I think, you know, at least it encourages me, the thing that we have to remember, you know, because I think a lot of times we kind of romanticize, if you will, if that's the right word to use, but, you know, people in the Bible, you know, like they're like, oh my gosh, Paul this, and oh, and Peter, and this guy, and you know, Isaiah, and Moses, and you know, Elijah, and you know, all the, you know, it's like we get this, you know, kind of superhero uh, picture of, you know, we paint this super, uh, superhero picture of, of them, which really didn't exist. Right. It really doesn't exist. They, they, they are not superheroes. They are people that God used. They are people that have issues, just like you and I have issues. Yeah. Yep. Uh, they are people that struggled with sin. They struggled with obedience to God. They struggled in life. They, they, they did things that they later regretted. I mean, does this sound familiar to anybody? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I, I think that we have to begin to learn that, that, that when we're reading the Bible, we are not reading about some fictional characters 
you know, that, that some kind of mythology or something, you know, like Zeus and all this other stuff. That is not who the Bible is depicting here. The Bible is depicting men and women that were made of flesh and blood, that were in need of a Savior, that were lost without Him, and that were used in spite of them. Yes. I think that that's so important for us to remember that in spite of us, you know, because I know how it's like we get this this idea that somehow we got to be these perfect people and we got to just walk this straight, this perfect straight line. And I'm not saying this that's not something we we strive for, right? right. Be holy because He's holy. But the, but the truth is, I mean, and that's, it's all true. But, but the fact is, one of the truths is, is that from time to time, you and I get off track. Amen. Yeah. Yes. That's just the truth. Amen. And so to think otherwise of ourselves or others is thinking incorrectly. Right. It's thinking incorrectly. Um, because we, we, we do. Uh, because we are made of the same stuff. It always, you know, it, it's always kind of one of them things. It's like, you know, Moses uh, you know, murdered a guy, buried him in the sand, tried to cover it up. You know, we talk about Moses like he's the greatest, he's the greatest pastor ever. <laughs> I ain't never buried nobody. <laughs> And I get talked about, about, I don't get talked about that good. Like I never murdered nobody, buried him in the sand, right? But we think Moses just, oh, Moses, Moses, you know, oh, he did this, look at what he did. He didn't do none of that, God did it. Amen. Right. God did it through him. But we talk about the man, and, and instead of glorify, glorifying God in the man. Right. You know, um, then of course there's, you know, King David. Oh, he's a man after God's own heart. Oh, we, we talk about all this stuff that, oh, yeah, he's a man after God's heart. He was the greatest king of Israel ever. And oh, he's just a man of God. Oh, yeah, David this, David that. David was a warrior. David did this. David did that. Oh, David's such a great guy. Yeah. But he <laughs> slept with another man's wife. That's right. Had a man. Sent that man out into battle where he should have been. Yeah. And because of that one act, I had a pastor friend of mine tell me one time I was dealing with some stuff and I was struggling with some personal things and this has been years ago um, and I was going on and on about what was me and I just, I don't know what's wrong with me. I just can't, I just don't, can't seem to overcome and blah, 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 blah. And I just, I'm this, I'm that. And he goes, he talked to me about David. He said, David killed over 70,000 people because of his act of sin. He said, you ever done anything like that? <laughs> I was like, not yet. <laughs> you know. But, you know, but, but yet we, we, we glorify, in a sense, David. Right. You know, we talk about all David's good stuff. And then when we mention his sin, we're like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, but God for David, God used him. But yet with us, with each right. other, yeah, he said he did this, they did that, they did this. That's right. Come on. And it's Amen. like, well, you know, what, I mean, what do you expect? We're, we're people, right? right? Right. And so, you know, so then there's, you know, of course, then there's the disciples. I mean, come on. You know, Peter couldn't keep his mouth shut. He was, you know, oh, I'll never deny you. I, I don't know Jesus, you know. Right. And all this stuff. They all left him. They all walked away from him. They all ran. Um, you know, the Apostle Paul, here's a guy that, you know, had Christians in prison, murdered, and I mean, all kinds of stuff. Uh, but yet we talk about him like he's the greatest apostle ever. Right. Yet even the, even Paul himself said, I'm the chiefest of sinners. Yes. Right. And so so I, I want us to understand as a people, as as followers of Jesus, that that God is not not using you because you're not perfect. He's not using you because you won't let him use you. Amen. And so, because because we are all broken. I love this song. I, I think I'm going to have to get in the company track and sing this song uh, probably next Easter for Kathy. Um, 
I love that song that says, and I'm sure most of you've heard it, uh, unless you're listening to KZZ, K, um, or, you know, Kick FM, or uh, what's some of the other ones? Well, I, oh, don't act totally. <laughs> anyway. But, and I don't know exactly who sings it, uh, but it talks about can we just be broken together? Casting crowns. What is it? Casting crowns. Thank you. Yeah. Casting crowns. Have, have y'all, has anybody ever heard this song? Yeah. It says, can't we all just be broken together? Man, wouldn't that be great if we could be? Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't it be great if we as a people decided that, you know what, Derek doesn't have to be perfect for me to love him completely. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great as if we as husbands and wife decided, you know, my my spouse, Missy, doesn't have to as close as she is Amen. <laughs> to perfect. Amen. She doesn't have to be for me to love her completely. Amen. Amen. Because see, and I think that that's this thing we we even do this in relationships sometimes. We we have this romanticized version of what we think marriage should be or what we think this person should be. Sure. And then when they fail that, <coughs> we and, the, and we don't love them completely because they've, they've let us down. Amen. Mm -hmm. They've fallen short of our standard. Yeah. And the truth is that we've all fallen short yeah. of His standard. Yeah. And there is none righteous, no, not one. And so it does us so good as believers. Um, and so I just wish that, you know, wouldn't it be awesome if we could just be broken together? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be awesome that, that we could love as Christ has loved the church? Amen. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could forgive as Christ has forgiven us? Amen. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could look past the flaws and the brokenness of others as we consider our own. It would be awesome, wouldn't it? Amen. Because then we could, then I think that the world that is, a, that is on the outside looking in would say they are truly Jesus' disciples because look how they love one another. Amen. Look how they love one another. You know, the Bible says that love covers a multitude of sins. Love covers a multitude of sin. Wouldn't it be nice if we would learn to cover instead of expose? Yeah. It would be nice. And I think we can get there with the grace of God. Amen? Amen. Yes. We can get there with the grace of God. I hear recently I was, uh, I called a, a friend of mine that I call on occasion. He's an elder uh, at a church in Moberly. And his name is Bobby Godwin. And I called him late at night. And I said, brother, I said, actually I'm texting. Because I figured he was already sleeping, you know. So I was just, I wasn't sleeping. So I texted him. And I said, hey, will you give me a call tomorrow? I said, I'd like to talk to you. Or I said, I need to talk to you. And so, when long he, he sent me a text back. And he's like, he goes, yeah, what time to work for you? And I was like, oh, I woke him up. He's like, man, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to wake him. Well, then he just called me. So he called me, I was telling him later about this morning. And uh, so I called him, and I was telling him all my woes. Poor me, woe is me. Anybody? You know what I'm talking about? Woe is me. Not, not about me, about you. Right. You know, uh, <laughs> You know, you know, I know I whine a lot, but you know. Uh, so so I'm, I'm going through all this stuff, this and this and that, this and that, and he just stone silent on the other end. You know, you ever you know, talk to somebody they're not saying it, and you're like, hello? Hello, are you still there? <laughs> and then and then you and then you then, then you then you realize it's like, well, I haven't had to give him a chance to talk. Right. <laughs> you know? I just been like, oh, 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 you know. And so he's patiently waiting and and all this stuff. So I'm telling him about you know all this stuff. It's like, man, I, I've, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I've done that, and so on and so forth. And uh, I said, man, I just don't understand. I just don't understand. And uh, 
And he, there was like, and so I'm, I'm kind of done with my rant. And there's this kind of awkward silence. I'm like, hello. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, what you do or what you have done is for Christ right. and no one else. That's right. Yes. All right, good night. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, what do you say to that? You know, what do you say? And and I think that that, you know, to me, it just kind of, it kind of brought this, like it's settled. You ever have somebody just kind of speak a word and it just kind of settles you? Yes. You know, it's like, wow. It's just, it just kind of, oh. And that's what this does. So I said, man, I said, you know, how many times do we get into the place where we think, well, I've done this for the church. I've done this for the church. I, or I've done this for this person. I've done this for that person. I've done this. And look what I've done. I've done this and done this. And so I'm going through And he's saying, you didn't do none of that for them. <laughs> if we're doing it for them or we're doing it for the church, we're doing it for the wrong reason. Amen. He said, because everything we do is to be done unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I was just like, wow. Wouldn't that be awesome if we could all, because see, when we start doing stuff for people, or when we start doing stuff for the church, and that's our why we're doing it. You, you follow me? So, and that's why we're doing it. Then, then when when the church or people don't give us back what we think we have deserved or earned, oh well, I'm I'm offended now. I'm upset. I'm hurt. Right. And man, so I was just like, you know, when he said, what you do, you do for Christ and no one else. And I was just like, oh, I, I mean, it's like we know that. Right. You know, it's like we know that. It's like, you know, intellectually, oh, yeah, yeah, brother, I do it for the Lord. I do it for the Lord. But do we really, are we really doing right. what we're doing for the Lord? And if so, then... Then, then why are we taken back by certain things? It's an interesting food for thought. And James is dealing with all of that. He's dealing with the motive. He's dealing with generosity. He's dealing with partiality. Showing favoritism to this one or that one or whatever. He's dealing with all of these things that every one of us as humans have to deal with on different levels. Some of us are more prone to something else or whatever it may be. But James is an awesome letter to the church because it deals with a just a a, a just a wide variety of issues that is going on in the church and, and going on within us, within our hearts and the motives and the reasons why we're doing what we do and so on and so forth. And, and that reason is Christ. The, the central figure of our affection and of our devotion and of our commitment is not the church, it's not the pastor, it's not even you the people. Yeah. Our center focus is Christ and it's for Him and because of Him and to Him be the glory. Can you say amen? amen. And so we sometimes we have to realign ourselves uh, because we sometimes get off of that, 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 that narrow way. And so in James, he picks up here and he says in verse 7, he says, therefore be patient. He says, therefore be patient until the coming of the Lord. I went over some of this last week, but I'm just kind of re recapping here a little bit. He said, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. <laughs> he said, see how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. Verse 8, you also be patient. Everybody say, be patient. Be patient. Look at your neighbor say, he's talking to you. <laughs> be patient. And I, I just love this. I, it's hard for me to get away from this verse. I'm going to try to get away from it today, but it's just it's, because it just speaks so much to, to me, to my heart. He says, you also be patient. And here it is. Establish your hearts. Establish. Everybody say establish. Yeah. Establish your hearts. You know what uh, the Bible also says about our hearts? 
It says, let not your hearts be troubled. Yes. Establish your hearts. Let not your hearts be troubled. It also says, set your affections on the things above and not on the things of the earth. Yes. Because see, the heart and the affections are tied together. Yes. And so when our eyes and when our hearts are not set and established in Him. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and your soul and your mind and your strength. And oh, by the way, love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Yes. So love the Lord your God with all of your heart. So the heart includes the affections. It includes our, our commitment, our devotion. And in James is saying, establish your heart. Set your heart, have it established and rooted and grounded. Establish it. Establish it. For, why, why is that important? Why is it important to establish our hearts? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> it says, watch, very next, very next. Establish your hearts, comma, I lost my verse. For the coming of the Lord is at hand. Amen. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord is at hand. Why is it important to establish our hearts? Because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Then he goes on to say, verse 9. Do not grumble against one another. Well, we could camp out right here, couldn't we? Let's, let's just camp out. Let's just camp out right there. Do not grumble. Do not grumble. Do not grumble. Do not grumble. Is there an echo in here? It says, do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. The judge is standing at the door. Do not grumble. You know, I think grumbling kind of goes back to that, how we see each other, what expectations of, of each other we have on each other. Right. And so if our expectations aren't met, we grumble. Mm -hmm. right. if, if I don't meet your expectations, you grumble. Right. If you don't meet my expectations, I grumble. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And, and so, so see, this is something... This is something that is a, a natural, I don't want to say natural, but it's a problem Amen. in the church because we don't get it. It's like we do it and then we justify doing it. Right. Yeah. We, we do what it says not to do, but then we justify doing what the Bible says not to do. Amen. Right. Well, because, well, but. Right. See, and so that's what he's saying. So see, this is, I love the letter of James. Because it's just, it's just laying it out there. He says, don't grumble against one another. You know, I think it's in First or Second Peter. He says, if you continue to bite and devour one another, you will be consumed yeah. by one another. Yeah. He goes on and thinks about husband's wife. He says, your prayers will be hindered. Yeah. See how important this is? And so it, within the body of Christ, within the body of Christ here, we're talking about Christians. We're talking about God's kids. Brothers and sisters in Christ. A family. Amen. So that's what he's talking about. He said, don't do it. He said, don't do it. He says, my brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them blessed who have endured. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen uh, the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. Amen. But above all, brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other uh, oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, uh, lest you fall into judgment. You know, there's a lot of talk about grace, and, the, and, I, and we need to talk about that. But yet in the New Testament... In the New Testament, you know, it's funny how quick we are saying, well, Christians are Christians aren't going to be judged. Right. <laughs> I mean, I understand that. 
at the judgment seat of Christ that we're not going to get in or out. We're not in or out because of what we've done. But yet, after the resurrection, after the cross, after Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, James writes, lest you fall into judgment. So what, I mean, what kind of judgment are we talking about here? Are we talking about hellfire? Absolutely not. But there is this judgment that will come upon our lives, right? There's a, there, there is a certain amount of judgment that we can bring upon our lives when we live and walk in error, willfully. Amen. You know, think of it this way. It, it's, it's kind of one of them things, it's like, okay, you know, when your kids are little, you know, they're two, three, you know, you, you don't expect a lot out of them, Amen. you know. They're still going to make some accidents. They're still going to, you know, there's going to be some problems. And as they get older, you know, I mean, once you hit about five, six, seven, if you're still pooping your pants, there's some issues. <laughs> I'm just saying. You, know, you got a first and second grader going around all the time. There's, there's problems. Right. You don't expect that. You know, you, you, they've kind of grown out of that, grown past that, you know, stage in their life. Uh, but, and so I think that that's, this, this willfulness of error, this hardening of our hearts, uh, and, and, and we're not repentive, that there is something here, and I, and I don't claim to know all of about that, and I don't, but why else would James say, lest you fall into judgment? If there wasn't something to that, and I'm not talking about a tormenting, oh, I'm going to hell, and oh, I'm going, you know. We're not talking, I don't think that that is even in the, in the realm of that, but there is something there. Um, and so I think we need to consider, because it's in the Word, um, and James is speaking this uh, to the church. And he goes on to say, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. It's like this morning I'm in my office, I'm kind of going over stuff, and gathering my thoughts and, and all that stuff. And Allie's going through the church and just singing. Uh, I want to say, hey, I'm busy in here. <laughs> but I just thought, well, she's cheerful. Amen. You know, it's like I'm reading this, but if anyone's cheerful, let them sing. I'm just like, really? <laughs> so it's just like there it was. You know, she was cheerful, right? And so she's going through singing. Gabe does it all the time. He'll walk in. Oh, he's singing. Uh, uh, you know. And sometimes you're just not in the mood to hear people sing. <laughs> 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 and it's like, and then my wife, you know, she's like, or whistle. Because a lot of times I'll go around whistling and carry, you know, whatever. And uh, it gets on her nerves quickly. She's just like, just shut up. Ah, just quit whistling. It gets on it. It's just because she can't do it as good as I can. <laughs> But anyway, so, so it says, it says, let him be cheerful. Let him sing songs. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. I mean, you can see here through the scriptures how James is covering, I mean, he's, he's wrapping this letter up. You ever been talking to somebody and you're trying to wrap stuff up? You know, it's like when I'm talking to people, sometimes I'm wrapping stuff up. And then I'll, I'll like kind of recap. Right. Like, okay, this, this, and don't forget this. Oh, yeah, by the way, this. Oh, yep, don't forget this. Oh, yes, this. And so that's what we see here. Because, I mean, James is covering all kinds of stuff here. He's dealing with all kinds of stuff here. <clears throat> he said, goes on to say, he says, And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, his, uh, he will be forgiven. Verse 16, Confess your trespasses to one another, and pray for one another. Wow. Amen. Confess your trespasses to one another. When's the last time you confess your trespasses, your trespasses to one another? I mean, think about that. I mean, the Catholics got one thing right. I mean, they're, they're confessing stuff. You know? I mean, it, it, it may not be necessarily, you know, you just never know. But it's like, hey, Father, I've sinned, you know, went done this, went done that, went done this. All right, dude, go ahead and go do, say this, do this, do that, you're good. You know, um, you know, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but um, I think we're going to 